So I just finished reading this book, The Star Builders, Nuclear Fusion and the Race to Power the Planet, uh, which takes a look at current efforts to research, design, build, and commercialize fusion power. Because it's something I've always been interested in, but something I didn't really know that much about. And it's always kind of, I've always kind of wondered, why do we not have fusion power yet? Because it seems like the ideal form of energy. It's like a perfect version of fission power. Uh, there's very little waste left over in the waste that is. There's less of it. It has a, high, a, a short half-life, so it tends to decay very quickly. It theoretically can produce immense amounts of power. Unlike fission, there's no risk of a catastrophic meltdown. And the fuel for it is extremely abundant, as it's just isotopes of hydrogen largely and you can get that out of seawater so it can be uh there's depending on the type of fusion we're talking about somewhere between a couple thousand and a couple million years of fuel and you just go down the list and check off more and more and you go this thing sounds amazing why don't we have it yet and that's an interesting question because it's not as if we don't have experience with fusion reactions uh the united states constructed the first uh fusion bomb in 1952. Now, for those of you who don't know, if you hear thermonuclear or H-bomb, that is what it is. It is a fusion bomb. It is a bomb that has a, I believe, from my understanding, a fission reaction that causes a fusion reaction. So we can build a bomb that does it. They were able to take fission power and, and uh, sorry, fission weapons and turn that into a power source. So what gives with, uh, with fusion? There's been research into this going on, well, since the 1950s. It always seems, as the book says, that it's 20 years away. At the moment, it's 20 years away. It was 20 years away 20 years ago. So why do we never seem to get closer? Why aren't we all running on star power? My takeaway from reading the book is because there's so many things involved with it. It's so complicated. And the amount of time needed to figure it out is longer than most people are willing to commit. Like he was going from place to place, like one group was designing targets uh, for the laser, another group was designing the laser, another group was designing the chamber, and then there's all these different kinds of fusion, and there's how the power plant will look. And very few of these people are actually working together. So the, the field is advancing. Part of the issue is when you're dealing with something that's this cutting edge, uh, there's a lot of basic science, to my understanding, involved, and a lot of that just hasn't been done because it's so cutting edge. So you have to do a lot of R&D that would already exist for something like a fission reactor. That's not to say that fission reactors are cheap, but they've been on around long enough. We know how they work. We know what safety precautions to take and how to get the best use out of them. And like I said, he goes through, there's all these different types of fusion, and some people are going with one, some people are going with another. I won't go into all the scientific details, but like I said, my takeaway is this is a project of immense proportions, immense resources that could take decades before you see any kind of payoff. And I just don't know if as, if as a society, we can do something like that anymore. Now, as I was going through this book, my mind drifted to something that you generally wouldn't associate with fusion power, and that's cathedrals, monuments, castles, walls, all those kind of big construction projects of the past. In particular, I was in Europe back in October, and I remember going to St. Vitus Cathedral in Prague, which if you ever get the chance is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend you go there. But... When I was there, the tour guide said, yeah, this has been under construction for 600 years. Um, it started construction in 1344, and it finished in 1929. I mean, think about that for a moment. How many generations that must have been who invested time and money in building this cathedral? Now, obviously, it probably was not under construction for all of that time, or maybe even most of that time. But still, every whenever they had time and money to work on it, they continued to work on this cathedral and they eventually got it done and it's spectacular and it's fantastic. And I was just thinking to myself, the level of dedication, of will, of willingness to sacrifice, of working towards something that you'll never see in your lifetime or your children's lifetime or even your grandchildren's lifetime. 
And I just can't see us having something like that anymore. That degree of devotion to a project. Nowadays, with the way the news cycle works, every cause du jour uh, shows up for like a couple months, then it becomes boring and the vibe changes. And then suddenly we're just not interested in it anymore. There's so many things that come and go. So many fads, live strong, AIDS, anyone remember Coney 2012? Or Saved Our Four, or any of these other like social media movements or that come out of nowhere. Everybody's 100% invested in them, and then the whole thing disappears never to be referenced again. I guess the, like, the question I have is, is we as, are we as a society capable of building something like this again? Of making that long-term commitment? And honestly, I don't think so. Now, how does this relate to fusion power? Well, it's it's similar in the sense that it's a very involved, long-term process with a lot of different aspects to it that's going to take a long time under the best of situations. It's quite possible, I, I don't know what the actual timeline is because it's always 20 years away, it's possible that the people who are working on f researching fusion power now will not see it come into um, widespread use in their lifetime or perhaps even their children's lifetime. Who knows, maybe it won't be until 2100 or something that we see fusion plants start to replace existing forms of energy. It, it doesn't really matter. You get the point that I'm trying to go with, that something like this, and I think it's this would also maybe apply to some other space-related things, like perhaps colonizing Mars or the Moon or something, requires such a long period of dedication in putting in effort without any kind of immediate gratification or result that I just don't know how possible it is anymore. I know we were able to get to the moon and achieve all these things with the space program, but society's changed in a lot of ways since then. And I feel like the cohesion and the will and the sense of purpose that made that possible is just no longer around. So that is kind of the question. I, I think it's with fusion power, it's a question of not so much if as will that is will people do it and do people have the will to do it because like i said there's so many different aspects of it governments will have to if they want to get in on this they're going to have to fund research for decades that won't see any immediate result now as with anything i'm sure there'll be lots of new uh, alloys discovered and computer tech there'll be a lot of uh, technology that comes out of it but until you get the actual fusion reactor that's producing net energy you're just throwing billions, if not trillions of dollars into a project that is producing nothing in the immediate future. And governments can't often maintain spending for even a single term in office, let alone decades. So while there is always money going into fusion power, uh, private and public uh, institutions alike are researching it, trying to get it to go. I just don't know if we have the degree of resources invested in it for the duration vested in it that'll allow us to get it. Now, a lot of people are, are brilliant. There's brilliant people in the world. People make breakthroughs. The technology is moving forward. That's, that's something to keep in mind. They're getting stronger lasers. They're getting better uh, targets for the lasers. They're building better um, reactor chambers and stuff like that. But it's a long way from being able to do that than being able to build a commercially viable power plant. And like I said, even if someone is able to do one thing, there's all the others. And once again, going back to the whole cathedral thing, when you think about the amount of different work that had to go into building something like this, um, masonry, uh, sculpture, painting, architecture, engineering, you had to get people to make the, uh, the pews and the pulpit and the doors and all the people who would support them and you'd need all kinds of specialists to do this from all across Europe, I would imagine. And you had to get those people to do things over, like I said, a 600 year period. And well, I don't think it'll take that long for fusion power. You get the point that I, I, I hopefully you get the point that I'm trying to make that I just don't know if we have the ability com to commit to something if not of this scale, something of the scale required to really get fusion power going in any sort of timely fashion that it'll help us 
uh, to replace fossil fuels. So I just thought that was an interesting comparison to make, and it really makes me appreciate what people in the past were able to do, given and have such a long-term perspective. Now, I guess the other question is, why is this the case? Why can't we do this anymore? Um, I think there's a number of different reasons. Honestly, I think first and foremost, it's because so many people don't have children anymore, and they don't have any kind of stake in the long-term future. And I'm not shaming anybody, I'm, I'm in this category too, but if you don't have children and you don't have grandchildren, then the future is a very abstract thing to you. Um, you're worried about leaving a better world for someone else's children, or for your nation, or your people, or whatever, but those bigger groups are also being degraded. So you have a, lot of, a large proportion of the population that has no children, that has no grandchildren, and so they don't have a kind of a personal stake in the future. Now, that's not to say everybody who does something great has to have kids. They can do it for the glory of God, for, for a sense of pride, for the, great of, the good of their nation, but we live in an increasingly secular society. Um, the nation state, I live in Canada, it's just been hollowed out. I won't go into it here, but I live in a country where the government actively despises its population and has purposely destroyed whatever identity it might have had. So it's, it's for a lot of people, they're like, well, my, my government hates me. My society isn't for me anymore. I don't have any children uh, and I'm not religious. So why do I care about this? I, I guess there might be some prestige involved. But then again, prestige comes from being able to achieve something in your lifetime, to get those short-term gains, to, to get the, the lines to go up on the graph in, in this current quarter, not anything really long-term or lasting. To kind of take a step back for a minute, like, even if you were working on the space program and you didn't have children, that was during a period where America believed in itself a lot more and believed in the future and the promise of it. And the idea that you would be part of putting a flag on the moon that future generations would see, and that for all time and as long as history exists, people would know America was the first country to land on the moon, that is being part of something bigger than yourself. That is an accomplishment. And if you love your country and you want it to do well, that might be motivation enough. Uh, once again, the other one I, I guess I haven't really talked about is is religion. And in a lot of cases, uh, this particularly with cathedrals, uh, obviously there's the religious aspect that doing this great work on behalf of God would help you in the next life. But also inherent in religion, the idea that the soul is eternal and that some part of you lives forever makes the future, even if you're not physically alive to experience it, something that you have a personal stake in. I remember C.S. Lewis, I think it was, said, the fundamental premise of Christianity is that you're going, in one way or another, you're going to live forever, and you have to find out how you're going to deal with that. And contributing to a project that gives glory to God, that will help uh, future generations find him, and as a tangible sign of your faith and your willingness to sacrifice, in that context does make sense. So what is this whole ramble about? Um, it's just the idea that I think with society becoming a lot less cohesive, with uh, nations losing their uh, cultural, religious, and demographic identities, I just don't know if there's the unity of purpose anymore that would drive like a great project like building a new cathedral. That would take 600 years. Of course, we still build cathedrals. They take a lot less time now. But, but you kind of get my, once again, hopefully you get my point. Something of that scale, something that consumes that proportion of society's resources. Just some food for thought. I think I thought that was an interesting parallel. How to resolve it? I, I'm not entirely sure. Perhaps that's for another day. But uh, I hope you found that interesting. You found that thought-provoking. and Maybe you gained a little more respect for previous generations. God bless everybody, and I'll talk to you again real soon.